going to talk today about precision health or precision medicine, the power of precision, how that's going to change medical care, how that's going to change our health system and disrupt everything we currently do for better. What is precision health? Well, now that we have the technology to actually synthesize large amounts of data, we can actually create individualized data sets for any given person that includes everything about them, all the way from their genetic code that they were born with to the biological changes that have occurred in their body through development, through early childhood, through environmental exposures, and their behavior patterns. Do they smoke? Do they not smoke? Do they eat healthy? Do they exercise? All of these behaviors matter because that impacts a person's biology, that impacts a person's genetic material in a permanent way that results in health or disease. And that's the concept of precision health. How is that going to disrupt our healthcare? Well, it's going to disrupt our healthcare in a number of ways. But some of the major things that will happen over the next few years is that we're going to be able to treat diseases like cancer that previously were not treatable or previously were uniformly fatal. How is that going to happen with precision medicine? What is cancer? Simply, it's a genetic malformation in the cell's code that determines how the cells divide and how the cells integrate themselves into the rest of the body. As we all know, most of our organs are constantly generating new cells. Old cells are dying off. New cells are replacing them. Like everything in this, in this world, it's constant uh, new replacing the old. And that normally happens in a very systematic way. There are hundreds of genes that regulate that process. And that process involves, clearly, as the cells are getting older, they go through a gradual death, and the new cells take their place and appropriately arrange themselves with the rest of the organ. Well, unfortunately, in certain situations, that genetic code gets messed up. So these cells that are born with this messed up genetic code don't take instructions correctly. So they start growing uncontrollably. They start cannibalizing cells next to them. They have no turn-off signals within them. So a number of such malformations suddenly make them start growing out of control. And that's what you see. These cells are abnormal. Normally, if there's an abnormality in those cells, they go through a natural death process. But that doesn't happen in cancer. So when this happens, then cancer cells grow uncontrollably, tumors happen, and the person eventually fails to survive this uh, onslaught of pathological cells. So how is precision medicine going to change that? Well, right now, we can do a lot more with the technology and the data that we can collect and synthesize. And through a variety of mechanisms, Genomic medicine is one of those where we can actually look at the entire genetic code of the cells and see what kind of mistakes there are and then try to correct them or try to target them. Let me illustrate this with the case of Emma. Emma is a six-year-old girl, as you can see, bright-eyed, beautiful girl, going to school, normal child, suddenly starts complaining of stomach aches. Within two months, she starts to lose weight. So she's brought to Riley Hospital. And turns out, with a variety of testing, they find that she has a very aggressive form of ovarian cancer. So go through this, this kind of disease is extremely aggressive. She's just a child, and ovaries don't 
develop cancer at that age unless there's some serious cell difference. So she goes through traditional chemotherapy. Absolutely no effect. And you see in this CAT scan that there are tumors everywhere in her body, spreading aggressively. So we're telling her parents that Emma probably won't live beyond another six weeks. At this point, what do we have to do? We said, let's, let's go ahead and get her genome sequencing done. What does that mean? It just means that we are reading the entire genetic code of these tumor cells. So her tumor tissue was sent for whole genome sequencing, which is not a trivial task. As you can imagine, it's literally reading every alphabet in her genetic code, in this cell's genetic code. Just to give you a concept of what that means, here is Moby Dick, the famous novel we all know about. It has about 203,000 words in it, a little over 1.5 million alphabets in it. The human genome has 3 billion base pairs, or 3 billion alphabets in it. So if I were to tell someone, find two letters that are misplaced in this entire copy of Moby Dick, it's going to take us weeks to figure out which one it is. So imagine a book with three billion alphabets, and you have to find a spelling mistake somewhere in that book. And that's what whole genome sequencing does. Well, we do have the technology now to do that. When the whole human genome was sequenced completely, and the data was finally available in 2003, it took nearly 12 years, almost $27 billion to sequence the first genome. Today, we can do it in four days for $2,700. So it's going to be probably done in less than $1,000 in a couple of years. So this is going to totally change the way we are looking at diseases where we are looking at how to treat individual patients. So how did this help Emma? We did that with her tumor. Turns out that she had one aggressive mutation, which is called ALK, or ALK mutation, which is normally seen in older people who develop a rare form of lung cancer. So she had this unique mutation in her ovary that caused this cancer. Fortunately, we have a drug that works against this particular mutation. Usually, it's currently approved for lung cancer, never been used in children, never been used for ovarian cancer. Well, we had nothing to lose, right, with Emma? So we started her on that. Within four weeks, her cancer started to disappear. Within three months, it's completely gone. And Emma went to Disney World last month. I'm sorry, I still get choked up every time I tell her story. Emma was the lucky one, because we already had a drug that would address this mutation. Not all children are this lucky. Not all cancer patients are this lucky yet. But the technology is moving so fast. Lots of wonderful things are happening in biology. But today, we have another way to approach this, instead of simply drugs, depending on drugs, which take years to develop. One of those revolutionary technologies is immunotherapy. This is another technology that we're beginning to build at IU. What this, what this does is, in addition to the genetic code, we can actually look at the proteins that are on the cells. So we can profile the cells and then target the immune system to attack those cells. We can engineer a person's immune system. 
Let me illustrate this quickly with another story. This is a story of Josh. Josh, again, is currently an 11-year-old boy. At age five, he came to Riley with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, common leukemia that occurs in children. Josh went through chemotherapy, radiation, 95% cure rate for this, generally. So Josh responded nicely. We said, great, we'll follow you up. If you're free of disease for five years, lucky and you're, good, you're one of the lucky ones. We think that happens in 95% of the cases. Josh was going along fine. Literally four years to the day, the disease comes back. So he's one of the unlucky 5% that didn't have that response. So what we were able to do then was just the typical approach right now is a bone marrow transplant, which sometimes they take out the entire bone marrow and replace it with a new bone marrow. Extremely difficult, painful procedure, months in the hospital. So Josh went through that, got cleared of his leukemia, Two years, disease-free. Age 11, the disease comes roaring back. So we're out of all options. Turns out that Josh's lymphoma cells have a protein on them called CD19. It's a common protein that occurs in leukemias and lymphomas. So we were able to take Josh's immune cells, called T cells, introduce a new gene into these cells through a virus, and now several of his T cells are programmed to go kill any cell that has this protein, CD19. We did that within two months. These cells have been re replicating in his body, completely killing all the cancer cells. What's more important is that these cells will be in his body for the rest of his life. They'll be circulating. They'll be watching for these cancer cells to pop up anywhere. They're going to kill them. So it's almost like a permanent chemotherapy that's constantly waiting for the cancers to appear. So that's the power of precision medicine. That's going to change the way we think about diseases, change the way we think about health, and how we can manage our own bodies better. So with the IU proposal and the grand challenge, what our hope is that we will actually cure some diseases. We particularly want to cure a cancer. We want to cure at least one childhood disease. Beyond cancer, this approach is going to change many other diseases. I think after cancer, the next disease to fall will be Alzheimer's. Because that's also prime for all of these technologies. We can predict who might become demented. We can predict what biological pathways may cause the dimension. And we can literally change the course of the disease over the next 10 years. But beyond that, we also hope to create a new generation of scientists, a new generation of education programs that would make us prepared for this kinds of revolution in healthcare. So the power of precision medicine is going to totally disrupt and transform the way we think about healthcare, diseases, treatments, and the way we take care of ourselves. So thank you very much, and hope to see a very happy and healthy future for humanity over the next 20 to 30 decades. Thanks very much.